I made a video about infinitely replayable games that were digitally available. These games were all from the 90s. Naturally, I had to make a sequel video featuring games from the 2000s. There weren't so many to pick from this time around. It's almost like the 90s were better. This same rules as before, but no sequels to titles on the previous list. Because obviously, if you've played SimCity 2000 or Diablo, you're going to check out 3000 and Diablo 2, right? Let's get cracking then. Call to Par 2. So we start off with a sequel, and it's a sequel to a Civilization game. But it's not a Civilization game. Except it is. Call to Par 2 by Activision is the sequel to Civilization Call to Par, a strategy title which claims to be based on a board game, and one that has nothing to do with the Civilization series. It's a flagrant abuse of legalese, and was rightly smacked down by a lawsuit for trademark infringement. There are claims that the similarity between the titles is entirely coincidental, but that's nonsense and I think everyone knows that. Troubled legal history aside, Call to Par 2 doesn't compare to the original Civ games. But if you install the Apoliton version, which features community updated source code and fixes, then all the troubles melt away into a fantastic 4x strategy title, complete with random map generation. Age of Mythology. Unlike our previous entry, this game was by Ensemble Studios, and legally they could use the Age of title without having to sue themselves. It was also the first RTS by them to move into the 3D realm, a decision that would ultimately doom the company. While you can see the elements of things about to go wrong, they hadn't quite got there yet. It's still one of the greatest games in its genre, and is steeped in its namesake, with gods and Atlanteans and mythic beings traversing the land like they own the place. Sure, it was never going to unthrone their undisputed king of this particular RTS niche, that being Ensemble's own Age of Empires 2, but continued community support for the spin-off and the game's re-emergence on digital platforms has left it in a very playable shape indeed. Rise of Nations. Imagine if you took the two previous games and mashed them together. Rise of Nations is Civilization meets Age of Empires, a 4x nation builder with RTS combat, another rare RT4x amalgamation that's like gold dust in this shattered gaming landscape. This makes an awful lot of sense, because the veterans that big huge games harboured under their roof had already helped make Civilization, Colonization, and Alpha Centauri, and go on to work on an expansion for Age of Empires based off the strength of this game. Thankfully, it was resurrected in 2014 on digital platforms, with a fancy new extended edition, offering players who hadn't discovered it the first time the opportunity to guide their nation to endless glory. Empires, Dawn of the Modern World. Stainless Steel Studios were founded by one of the creators of Age of Empires. So that's the third game in a row that's directly related to that series, and a direct competitor to both of the previous titles. So it uses the same engine as Empire Earth, is from the same development team as Empire Earth, but isn't part of the Empire Earth series, despite having Empire right there in the name. No, I don't understand that either. It's another historical RTS with a random map generator, but this time more prominence is given to the in-game narrative, and it sports free campaigns in very different points in history. Those who know the genre are aware of the drill by now. And if you've somehow not come across stainless steel in their games before, there's plenty of empirical evidence that this is yet another great historical title for you to enjoy for ages. Sins of a Solar Empire. Finally, we move away from all those historical strategy hybrids and into a science fiction strategy hybrid. That's right, it's another great RT4X title. I've dumped over 200 hours into the Rebellion expansion from Ironclad Games. It has minimal plot, 
no campaign, and a giant or tiny randomly generated universe for you to conquer depending upon your preferences and time. Gone are the cosy turn-based research fonds of a 4X genre. You've got to do it all in real time, as you command your fleets to jump from system to system and expand your empire. I talked about this title recently in another video about modern games with retro influences, so I'll not go on about it here. Suffice to say, I'll always recommend this title for strategy fans. Euphoria. Fed up of massive explosions and awe-inspiring collisions between forces? What's wrong with you? If you'd rather prefer a relaxing and atmospheric strategy instead, then Euphoria might be for you. We're up to 2009 now, and at this point independent titles, or indies as they'd become known, were growing in prominence. This one in particular appeared in many bundles. You capture asteroids with seedlings and pollinate them to produce trees. These in turn will generate more seedlings for you to use. This pollination continues until you've expanded over the entire map. It's certainly a different take on the genre, and will either keep you enthralled for hours at a time, or last you 10 minutes before you move on to something more substantive. Spelunky. A roguelike platformer with cutesy graphics from an indie, Spelunky has a lot to answer for. Removing the unfortunate legacy of the title, you've got 16 levels of procedurally generated caves to explore, and your adventure for treasure as you descend into it will differ each time you play, or rather, each time you die, as the game is quite unforgiving and requires that you play it multiple times in order to complete it. There's very little plot. You're some sort of Indiana Jones-style character, and that's enough. Maybe you'll enjoy this sort of thing. I certainly didn't, but that's because I'm terrible at platformers. Torchlight. Take two-thirds of the founders of Blizzard North, formerly known as Condor, and a studio responsible for Diablo. Have them make their own Splinter Studio and then produce an action RPG with a much lighter graphical style and tone. The result is Torchlight. Fans of Diablo will know exactly what they're getting into here, with a handful of quality of life improvements over the original and its sequel, and a new dungeon to explore, with loads of procedurally generated loot and rooms and monsters. It's all very friendly on the eyes, and I think that's because they wanted to make an MMO initially. Thank goodness they stuck to their roots. It's important that people who mine out whole genres stay true to their craft. And that's it. There are no other games from 2009 where you plunge into the depths of a procedurally generated world that offers near-infinite content or replayability. Though it will surely be a notch on your belt if you manage to complete them all. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Was there some other big release around this year? Ah well, I'm sure it'll come to me. Until next time.